Hi, I'm Garrett Bulkus with Last Breath Media, and today I'm going to walk you through how to score a whitetail buck using the Boone and Crockett scoring system. A couple of things that you're going to need to do this, or that I prefer to use, I use a full size 25 foot tape measure. I have a smaller quarter inch diameter uh, or quarter inch width by 10 foot small tape measure, a writing utensil. And then I have about 40 inches of 550 pound paracord. And the reason why I really like paracord is that it does not stretch. So when I take any measurements on this, it'll be precise and there won't be any give or any flex or any chance for any discrepancy. And lastly, of course, you will need a pad of paper. Now Boone and Crockett on their website actually has an official score sheet. You can print these off and use them. However, if not, I will walk you through what you'll need to write down to score your deer. Uh, behind me here, you're gonna see that we have three different whitetails. We have a typical eight point, we have a typical 10 point, and then we have a deer that is going to be a typical mainframe 10 with an abnormal point. I'd like to show you how to score an abnormal point. So we're gonna get into it and we will probably do the abnormal one last. We're gonna start with the eight point. There are a sequence of measurements that every single whitetail will have. I always start with the spread that is going to be the widest point inside to inside in a straight line. Then you are going to have a measurement each for main, each main beam. You're going to start on the back of the main beam, follow the curl all the way through and to the tip that's on both sides. You then have the tines, also known as the G's. So this would be a G1, a G2, and a G3. If this was a 10 point, you would have a G4. If this was a mainframe six by six, you would have a G5 and et cetera. And the last set of measurements is going to be your circumference measurements. You take one just above the pedicle at the base, in between the G1 and the G2, in between the G2 and the G3, and in between the G3 and the G4. If your deer does not have that G4, you're going to go in between, halfway between the last time. So in this case, it would be his G3 and the point of his main beam, somewhere in here. Most confusion comes between an eight point and a 10 point as those are the most taken deer in North America. So for here, again, your circumference measurement would be approximately here, approximately here, here where the tag is, and then your last one in between the G3 and the G4. Now as an A point, you'll see, again, there's no G4 here, so you're gonna just gonna go from the G3 halfway to the tip of the main beam, somewhere in this area to get your final circumference measurement. We're gonna go over the Boone and Crockett scoring sheet if you have the ability to print one of these off. It's very self-explanatory. Personally, I would start with the hunter information down at the bottom, and then you can work your way from the top down. There is a slight confusing part to this, and that's gonna be right here underneath the diagrams here, where you're going to see some questions and some measurements that may confuse you in the sense that some of these don't get added into the total gross or net score of your deer. Quite simply, A in the top column here is just number of points on the right side and number of points on the left side. That is simply for data purposes. It has nothing to do with the score. Under column B, you'll see the tip to tip spread, which that's going to be from the tip of the main beam to the tip of the main beam. Again, that is just used for data that does not get added into the total gross or net score. C is the greatest spread, and that is actually from the furthest point of antler on outside of the right and the furthest point of antler on the outside of the left. Again, this is just used for data purposes. It does not get added to the net or gross score of your deer. However, in D, right here, the inside spread of your main beams, which is most commonly referred to as the spread of your deer, does get totaled into the score of your deer. Next, you simply work your way down. You will see that there is a line for abnormal points. F is going to be the measurement of your main beam itself. G are your tines brow tines through the rest of the beam, and H are going to be your circumference or your mass measurements. So let's say you do not have this paper. Let's say you don't have access to it and you just wanna do it on your own, you have a piece of scratch paper here. I always start with the spread, which that's gonna be inside of the main beams. And then I have a right side and a left side. 
And next, I'm going to list all of the other measurements, which are going to be the G's for his tines and the H's for his circumference. All right, so we're gonna get into measuring it. Really quick before we do, I just wanna say that I am not an official Boone and Crockett scorer. These are unofficial measurement tools, and the way that we are doing it today is going to get you a gross or a green score. It will not be registered as an official net Boone and Crockett score. To do that, you will have to have a Boone and Crockett official come and measure your deer 60 days after harvest to get the true and accurate measurement. But to start, like I said, I am using a standard tape measure, and I'm going to start with the inside spread. So quite simply, I just take my tape measure and I'm gonna put it on one side of the beam and then I'm going to work it and not really try to get a hard angle, but I'm gonna find the spread. And this buck is going to be right at 17 and 6 eighths. And I said 6 eighths instead of 3 quarters because at the end, you will add up all of those eighths and put that into your score. So by using eighths instead of quarters, or sixteenths, it will be much helpful. Everything is done in eighths. So, 17, six eighths. Next, for me personally, I do the main beams using my paracord. I'm going to just put it right at the back of the main beam. I use one finger to hold it, and I use the other one to pinch it off again, and then I take my finger and just let it meet my other one here so that the rope does not shift. And you just follow the outside of the main beam to the best of your ability until you get to the tip. So then I pinch it off with my fingernail and I take, again, my standard tape measure. I will put that out and lock it. And using the fingernail, which I blocked it off at the tip, put it flush on that end and I take my paracord and I stretch it all the way out. This buck's main beam on his left side is going to be 20 and 5 eighths. So I discard my paracord now and this is where I use my small quarter inch tape measure. Everything that I do, I will wrap it around for the circumference and you will see that I'm just going to subtract it from one. So going from H1 all the way to H4, I'm just going to put the tape measure there and wrap it around here like so. And I use the one as my zero so that I can pull it tight and get an accurate measurement. And the reason why I'm doing this is because it's much more accurate than using the end of the tape measure. So this deer, as it sits, measures to be five and five eighths. Subtract one is a mass measurement of four, five eighths. So now I'm going to do H2, which is in between these beams here. And that is going to be four and seven eighths, which is three and seven eighths. Remember when you use this, you always subtract one. And the reason I'm doing that is because as I'm pulling this around, I can't get this perfect, so I just simply use the one as my zero. I'm gonna go in between here for the H3. Four, four and four eighths, which is three and four eighths. And last is going to be right in the center here, approximately. Three, two and six, eight. Next are the G's. And when you take the measurement, you will draw an imaginary line. Some guys will use masking tape, but you'll take, I like to tape my tape measure and just right about the main beam there to give myself a visual aid of where it needs to sit. Because again, you, you don't actually measure to the center of the main beam. It's from the top of the main beam to the top of the main beam. Right there. And I start on the tip, pull my way down. It's going to be four and seven eighths. Oh, 
I'm gonna work my way backwards. So now I'm onto the G2. Which is eight and seven eighths. And lastly is the brow tine or the G1. You will take that again if you were to draw this line with the tape measure imaginarily and pull it up. That is going to be two and one eighth. So now that we've done the left side, you simply mirror that on the right side and you will have your deer nearly scored. The way that I prefer to do this is I then go through and I add up all of the eights. So through each of one of these measurements, you should have an eighth to complement it. If you don't, you just leave zero over eight, but I go through, add up all of those eights, get that total number divided by eight, and then that is what you're going to add to the other whole numbers. So add up your eights, get that number, divide it by eight, that gives you your extra inches of antler and your eights. And then you take all of your whole numbers, add those together, plus that number you just summed up, and that's going to give you your green gross total, which in this case is 120 and 1 8 inches. All right, so now we've got a different deer on the pedestal here. This was unfortunately an EHD kill, but let's say we were scoring this deer instead of a typical frame deer. You'll notice it has this inline point right here that's going to be an abnormal point. You still register everything normally as you would. However, on this deer's right side, you would list one AP abnormal point in which you would take the measurement all the way down to the main beam to it touches the main beam to the tip to get your abnormal point. Let's say this deer had a split or a kicker coming off the side or a drop tine, all of those are considered an abnormal point and we'd be scored the same way. Hopefully this helps you score deer. If you'd like some more instructional reading, there is going to be a link at the bottom of this to the blog post that complements this video. Again, thanks for watching and hopefully this helps you out.